Okay, folks, please take your seats. We're going to get started here. Those of you uh, viewing this online, welcome. Uh, we're live here in San Jose at the OCP conference. <clears throat> the show floor is uh, closed, so we're uh, <clears throat> ready to sit through another talk. Huh? So uh, <clears throat> my name is Mark Carlson. Um, I work for Kioxia. Um, I participate in uh, several different standards organizations. This work is uh, joint work that was uh, done between MVM Express, uh, the Distributed Management Task Force, and the Storage Network Industry Association. And it's a little bit future looking, but I'm, I want to start with some of the history that uh, uh, newcomers may not know. Um, at one point in time, all storage was pretty much direct attached, uh, and the single host owns that storage. And then we introduced storage area networks. This is where multiple hosts can share that storage, which avoids uh, siloing of that storage and enables storage efficiencies. I examples from history include uh, fiber channel and iSCSI storage networks. Uh, those are still around today. Um, but we're moving on from them. Um, the main architectural concept is there is a storage controller in front of any of the drives uh, in these SANs, storage area networks. Um, and then came hyperscalers. Uh, Ross's talk, which was right before this, is showing uh, direct attached SSDs uh, on uh, commodity systems. Uh, and then they have plenty of engineers to do write the special software to manage those hyperscale nodes in a solution. But the industry is now moving to NVMe technology. You saw a lot of NVMe technology out there on the shore floor this week. <clears throat> and now emerging is the NVMe over fabrics technologies, which enable the emergence of Ethernet as a fabric for network-based NVMe storage systems. Uh, but the last foot for most of these systems is still a PCIe network. In other words, there's a NVMe over Fabrics controller in front of PCIe drives. Um, now systems and devices on a native interface can act as a storage network. So what about Ethernet as a storage network? It, initially, it's just a transport. But the endpoints performed all the storage services, such as in the iSCSI case. Um, we've now matured that into specialized protocols. There's key value protocol to access data in the mainframe context, object protocol to access massive amounts of unstructured data. And now NVMe over Ethernet storage uh, takes advantage of a queuing paradigm uh, from the host which really increases its performance, lowers its latencies, and uh, eliminates some of the blockages uh, that were available in the past. So it's no longer gated by a, a transaction paradigm where you wait for an acknowledgment. Um, so we predict that the next step in this evolution will be NVMe over Ethernet straight to the drive. And that removes the storage controller processing bottleneck and uh, scaling problems when you uh, only have a few drives and you have to buy a whole controller. So the history of NVMe over fabrics technologies is sharing NVMe-based storage across the network uh, in which you get better utilization. So capacity, rack space, power, and incremental uh, costs uh, better scalability, management, false isolation, etc. cetera. Uh, of the folks that are, are participating in NVMe Express, there's over 50 contributors to this. Uh, we released version 1.0 in 2016, and a new version came out this, just this year when we refactored everything into NVMe 2.0. And the transports that are supported include Ethernet, InfiniBand, and Fiber Channel, and of course, TCP. <clears throat> the products are now in the market for most storage, major storage vendors. You can see them out on the floor, or you could have seen them <laughs> out on the floor. So what are the storage targets today? Well, 
Typically, systems terminate this NVMe OF architecture connection and use, like I said, PCIe-based SSDs internally. Uh, these SSDs are behind an array or a JBOF controller, <clears throat> and that does limit its performance. Um, the SSD performance is increasing faster than CPU NVMe <coughs> F NVMe over Ethernet drive uh, use cases. So if you have a CPU in front of today's, let's say, Gen 5 PCIe disk, you can, can only have a couple of or three SSD drives behind that CPU, and then you're out of oomph in the CPU. So, and this is going to increase uh, when you get Gen 6 and Gen 7. It, it's essentially memory behind a PCI block interface. Uh, there may also be problems with your network interface controller uh, as far as performance uh, and latency with the store. And, you know, you get something from the host, then you have to turn around and translate it to PCIe, take the PCIe results, turn around and transfer it back over Ethernet. <clears throat> and then there's costs. The, co the CPU, SOC, RNAX, switches, memory don't scale well to match this increasing SSD performance. So Ethernet SSD, or eSSDs, with NVMe OF technology termination on the drive itself, that controller functionality is now able to be distributed. The scaling point, that is the thing you have to buy to increase uh, capacity, now becomes a single drive in an inexpensive controller. So this enables EBOS, Ethernet attached bunch of flash, um, where you have power across all the drives, you have cooling across all the drives, and then you just plug the SSDs in behind an Ethernet switch. Now, does this make each drive more expensive? Yes. Uh, and initially, you're going to pay more for a drive with a controller than if you have a drive without a controller. It's just a, a matter of hardware and software uh, expense added to that drive. But if you have a big enough drive, that cost per gigabyte is not really that affected that much, <clears throat> maybe by a penny or two. Um, and then those efficiencies of scale, when you have massive market of these things, uh, scales down now a lot faster than your typical uh, front-end controller. And then, as a result, you get a lower cost per bandwidth and a cost per IAPS. In other words, you tune the amount of controller for what that drive is capable of. If it's a PCIe uh, Gen 5, you may need to put more CPU down in that drive. PCIe Gen 6, you might need to put more CPU down on that drive. <clears throat> and, but it's tuned. It's so that you can get the maximum performance out of the drive without having to totally just replace the controller that's in front of PCI drives. So the SSD throughput itself, like I said, is increasing faster than network bandwidth as well. Uh, and so you want to be able to have faster and faster connections into these SSDs over time. Um, <clears throat> so an existing JB, J, JBOF may have all this bottleneck hardware and, and software in there that as the drives get faster, you have to replace. But with the Ethernet JBOF, like I say, those SSDs are now tuned to the, to the performance of the SSD itself. The switch is, uh, might have to be replaced if you go from 25 gig to 50 gig to 100 gig, uh, but that's to be expected. Uh, so there are different ESSD designs today, uh, but largely what we're seeing emerge is, is NVMe OF over Ethernet. Some will support multiple interfaces and protocols. Um, Rocky is the current state of the industry, but there's drawbacks to Rocky. It's a special kind of NIC, our NIC, that you need to buy. Uh, and uh, it only scales so far. It's subject to some com uh, congestion issues. Um, and so really, I think the ESSDs will take off when you see a native TCP, NVMe over TCP, uh, straight to the drive and inside the drive, inside the system on a chip that the drive has already. 
The diagram on the right is a, a standard that we did in the SNIA for the pinout of these Ethernet SSDs. We took the high-speed PCIe lanes that are on this connector already and uh, just made them Ethernet lanes. So there's a FF, SFF8639, which you all know from the U.2 form factor. And we also pinned out for the new EDSFF type connectors that you see out there on the floor today. So the use case in one instance is where you still have a controller, but now instead of translating from NVMe OF to PCIe, it's just an NVMe OF to an NVMe OF connection. There's no translation, there's no store and forward. Um, you may do other data services up in that controller, but the real advantage of using Ethernet drives on the back end of that controller is that you can scale much farther than you can with the PCIe fabric. You can scale up to a rack of uh, trays of Ethernet drives without having to touch PCIe at all. And you can have a mix and match of different Ethernet speeds as you grow your rack. And you might start off with a bunch of 25 gig Ethernet drives, uh, add some more when the speed goes up to 50 gig and so forth. And it all continues to work uh, seamlessly. And then there's a use case of just plain disaggregated SSD storage, right? Um, where you don't even need a controller. Any host can talk to any drive through the, through the Ethernet fabric. There's not a, a data center fabric and a storage area network fabric. It's all one network, right? This is simpler. It's easier to administrate. And uh, it's composable. Once you've disaggregated things and you've actually got multiple namespaces in each of these drives shared with multiple hosts, you can do all sorts of really neat tricks about getting the data from one place to another, replicating it using host-based software, doing any kind of software-defined storage you want on the front end to their host, um, and, and leaving the back end so, such a simple fabric of easily manipulated um, namespaces. So in SNEA, we, we have a specification, new specification called the Native NVMe OF Drive Specification. Allows you to discover and configure the drives, uh, configure their interfaces, what speed Ethernet should they be, um, uh, management capabilities, etc. I mentioned the connectors. Uh, the connectors may need to configure the PHY signals based on the type of drive interface. Um, and then survivability and mutual detection is important. Uh, as I mentioned, we have standardized pinouts now that we took through the SNEA SFFTA uh, organization uh, to uh, make Ethernet drives uh, standard pinouts. And then we, over time, more and more uh, NVMe OF technology will be integrated in. Um, there's new NVMe OF uh, technical proposals coming in from NVMe. Those will be added to this specification for things like discovery, for admin, for security. And then management is through the same interface as NVMe OF, Ethernet. But it's really out of band of the NVMe OF connection. It's just a standard HTTP. So the issue is if you have, let's say, tens of thousands of these Ethernet drives all on your data center fabric, how are you going to manage them? How do you scale that management? Well, this has been thought about for a number of years, and you want to use a RESTful API to do that, which doesn't require uh, aggregator on top of aggregator, manager of the managers. It's really just every component in your data center reports its own management information. It reports it straight on to the Ethernet network. It uses standardized HTTP commands, easy to understand. You can even look at it through your browser. But most likely, it will be a set of JSON uh, that will look uh, fancy. It will show a, a picture of your drive enclosure and have little green lights for each of the drives. 
Each of those drive statuses is fetched through a separate HTTP interface straight to the drive. And this is allowed by uh, Redfish and Snea's Swordfish. And uh, the principle is that each element reports its own management interface. And so all you're really doing is following links in this higher level management facility directly down to manage the drive. Or not. Many of you are managing some software-defined storage above it. Uh, and so there's a drive interoperability profile that's been developed for Redfish and, and Swordfish. We have a mock-up of typical configurations. So even if you don't have one of these drives, you can still try out the management of it through a browser or, or a bunch of JSON. Um, and so what SNEA did is they published that interoperability profile at DMTF. This is where the rest of Redfish lives. And so Swordfish is really just an extension to Redfish for all the storage elements. And the recent, recent work we've done there in that interoperability profile is map it to all the NVMe properties and operations and functions. So that map is available. It's a Swordfish NVMe model overview and mapping guide. We published the first version back in June. We're updating it on a every six month or so basis. Uh, but, but that way, if you're familiar with NVMe, you can find out what does that mean over in Redfish. And if you're f familiar with it in Redfish, you can say, oh, OK, that means this in the NVMe specs. And so that makes it very easy for an engineer for, to come from one world and start living in the other world. So like I mentioned, this is a three-way effort by uh, SNEA, DMTF, and NVM Express. Um, it takes that base manageability for NVMe storage devices and allows you to manage individual and aggregate devices and environments at scale. And it provides this clear map for NVMe technology folks that don't know Redfish or Swordfish to understand that. And uh, we're still continuing to work on this. Uh, we're flushing out some of the schemas for eBOFs and other configurations like that so that uh, even if you're managing a, an aggregated uh, um, tray in a rack, and even if you're managing a rack of trays, you can still uh, piece it all together. So Redfish and Swordfish use the available low-level transports to get the device transport specific information into those common models. What this might look like is a BMC uh, exposing the Redfish Swordfish model, but turn around and use NVMe MI inside the box. So the drive doesn't know, have to know how to do Redfish Swordfish. The BMC acts as a kind of proxy uh, for taking the information from MI and exporting it via Redfish and Swordfish for the whole box. And then uh, the scope of the standards include the NVMe subsystem, NVMe OF uh, transports, and the NVMe domain models. So here's some of the major NVMe, uh, NVMe objects mapped into Redfish and Swordfish. So NVMe subsystem, NVMe controller, I.O., admin, and discovery, uh, namespaces, endurance groups, NVM sets, and NVM domains. And uh, I'll refer you to the NVMe specs and te technical proposals if you want to know more information. And then this is what it looks like in Redfish and Swordfish. This is an a ESDSD use case where you have th these objects over here in the Redfish Swordfish model. You have these objects over here, which are in the NVMe model. And this is an instance view of an ESSD where you have, a, excuse me, a mock-up of even the, the fabric parts of it, ports and, and so forth. So who's developing this? There's an overlapping set of companies that are on either or both sides of this between Redfish and Swordfish. Um, we've been doing this work, I don't know, maybe 10 years. Does it seem that long? Um, but uh, 
but it's seeing quite a bit of adoption. Uh, if, if you're out on that show floor asking what management interface they have for their products, it's increasingly uh, answered with this. Uh, and even the hyperscalers uh, we've seen have an uh, interesting in <clears throat> Even though they've been doing their own instrumentation for these things all along, they're now seeing the benefits of pushing this off to the vendors to do their own instrumentation and just using it internally instead of ha having to reinvent the world. Uh, keeping around a bunch of technical debt, uh, etc. Well, where do you find more info? Well, this is a busy slide, but take a picture of it, download the PDF of the flies, and then just click. <laughs> That's what I would do. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff out there. There's uh, SNEA has a whole uh, library of several years of storage developer conference talks on the subject. Uh, DMTF has a uh, fish school <laughs> uh, of, of redfish deep dive uh, and uh, getting started things. MVM Express has a bunch of YouTube videos up about their technologies. Uh, there's even the Open, Open Fabric Alliance uh, has, has a bunch of information on this as well. All right, disclaimer, thank you, questions. Please go to a mic, I think, so the, uh, the online people can hear your questions. 